actually been somewhat active, which is a change from a lot of my streams, uh, thanks to Purple Beautifly. And I'm curious, Purple Beautifly, were you in the stream I did with Kelsey uh, last week? Because you mentioned that Kelsey's one of your favorite artists. Aha! I even think I know who you were, because... Only one person was active in that stream. So thank you for coming back. <laughs> Out of curiosity, are you also uh, an artist or someone who uh, does tabling or is thinking about tabling? Because that struck me as the thing that uh, Kelsey in particular is appealing to people for. Not that Kelsey's work isn't generally appealing. It just, that's sort of their specialty in a lot of ways. There we go. Part of how uh, Kelsey and I ended up becoming friends was we were both doing uh, some of the same strange cons at the same time. And Kelsey is kind of doing what I want to be doing, but like a couple years ahead of me. Um, so I've done a little bit of following on their coattails, which honestly, great way to get going. I found someone that I can do uh, comic stuff with. We've shared tables a few times and it's been absolutely fantastic. Not an artist at all, a computer nerd, really. I love to learn how things work in the background, so all of the background stuff is wonderfully fascinating. Well, I will try to talk more about what crazy stuff I am doing. So the program I'm using is one of Adobe's biggest contenders, or one of the best... One of the biggest contenders for knocking Adobe off the throne of uh, good digital drawing programs. And it's my personal favorite. Uh, Clip Studio is the name of the program. And funny thing about it is uh, it used to be called Manga Studio, but they changed the name because they didn't think that the term Manga Studio would appeal to Western artists, which is dumb. <laughs> like... They thought Clip would sound better. Uh, I guess they were thinking of clip art, but I don't want to think of clip art when I'm making comics. It's a terrible name for it. That, or they wanted to capitalize off of Cliff, Clippy. It seems like you're trying to make a comic, um, which, that's an old reference. Uh, all right, the rest of this page should actually be a little bit easier. Don't even need a background thing. Uh, I do actually need to make character inks too. Turn it down to 51. So I like to make the uh, background characters. <laughs> oh, Clippy's so annoying. That's right. I'm glad I'm not the only person left alive who remembers. What's funny to me is I feel like a lot of people don't remember that there were alternatives to the paperclip. Uh, you could also do, like, I think I had mine set to be, like, this little guy that looked like Einstein, and, like, they all had different animations. I thought that was kind of fun. Um, I think it'd be really funny as, as a joke. Uh, maybe, like, April Fool's one year or something like that. Uh... Microsoft rolls out a new uh, helper AI. They have Cortana right now, but uh, I don't really use Cortana on my computer for some reason. Uh, I don't use the various AIs very much at all, but the, um, 
There we go. I think it'd be great if one year they rolled out, hey, check it out. We've got a brand new AI assistant and it's going to be great. And it launches and it's clippy. Like how great would that be? <laughs> I would laugh so hard, so very hard. Oh, I'm going to say you're in front, so that'll work. I already dislike Windows as it is. Windows is, honestly, of the operating systems, it's the one I like the most. Uh, that was a little controversial when I was in art school because uh, a lot of Mac fans go to art school. But I don't know. I like that not everything is done for you. A lot of stuff's done for you, but if you really want to go in there and mess with settings and make something crazy happen, you can do it a lot easier than you can in uh, Mac. And I've never gotten technical enough to use uh, Linux or any of the other uh, alternatives. Man, now I'm getting nostalgic for Clippy. How did that happen? This is a weird stream. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm really thinking that future streams at some point are going to start having guests a lot more often. It's something that, like doing the stream with Kelsey last week, really made it clear that it's a lot easier to do this kind of thing when there's somebody else there, uh, just physically there that you can talk to or streaming in and things like that. Well, I will say having people in chat is also very nice. I'm an old Unix Linux geek, so OS X with its Unix interface works great for me. That makes sense. Uh, I do know that, I do know enough to know that Mac is based on the Linux OS. And I also know people who, for that reason, prefer working with a Mac. But if you're not quite at that level, but you still want some flexibility, uh, that's when Windows can be kind of nice. Two of you talking to each other was really fun. Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of like the banner we try to get at uh, cons too. And uh, as it happens, Kelsey and I hadn't had a chance to talk in a few months because, you know, life and drawing a graphic novel it tends to be quite a way of uh nah. it tends to get in the way of doing anything useful all right panel three Last one because there was no actual background. <sighs> Whoa, background inks 21. A lot of background inks. There we go. Mac is actually based on Next Step, a Unix OS Jobs made when he left Apple with a big BSD tossed in. There isn't that much Linuxy stuff in OS X. Oh, well, there you go. I'm learning stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm one of those guys that I've had. I had friends from uh, back in like middle school uh, who I caught up with later, uh, who talked about how I had such nerd potential, but then just never really got ended up becoming a tech head. Uh, the most tech head I tended to be was uh, I'm that guy that can walk near malfunctioning technology and it suddenly starts working again. Because uh, in my old job, I was the dude with glasses, so I would constantly be asked for help with uh, various tech problems. And... Uh, What's funny is people would be complaining about something not working, and as soon as I walked near it, boom, all of a sudden, just started working. And I was like, you're welcome. It's like the ghost of the Fonz was constantly following me around, and whenever I walked near bad tech, it'd just be like, boom, hey. It was great. What was really funny is I, I actually was in a job where I was offering uh, tech support on a website, which, uh, by the way, in case anyone is not aware, when you get tech support people uh, for any professional web uh, professional website, very often they are not the people who program anything. Like they have no control over that. They're just the customer service face of that. Uh, I had, wasn't even trained on how to use the website. I had to play with it and figure it out and stuff like that. Um, so be aware, you're not going to get to talk to those to those people with a lot of companies. It happens to me sometimes in the habit of breaking things in confusing ways. Yeah, that's always the best, isn't it? it it's vindicating when you uh, have a problem and then bring it to tech support, like, like the actual tech support, the ones who... Uh, troubleshoot for the troubleshooters and they look at it and they're just like that's weird how did you do that like what's going on because you're like okay i'm not just stupid this is this is legitimately weird people are so mean to frontline support i try to hard very hard to be nice to them good for you um i worked in customer service for i think about five years before i went full-time cartoonist um and we appreciate you <laughs> We appreciate the nice people. Um, something I thought about doing when I uh, was still working customer service was actually making a comic about it. Uh, it never really came together, uh, but it would have been kind of like, very, it was very Dilberty what I came up with, but it was kind of an interesting project. I was calling it CSRs. Uh, I made four strips. And when I left, I gave it to a bunch of the people <laughs> at my old office. And yeah, it was pretty much just, you know, making fun of that kind of thing. It's uh, one of the funny things I realized working customer service is that my mom is that customer from hell. Uh, like she used to be so hard on customer service people and I had to lecture her about it. I was like, you, you can't do that. These people are just doing what I do. <laughs> you are no longer allowed to be mean to them. <laughs> and she actually got a lot better. I think a lot of people don't realize that the front line customer service people have no control <laughs> over a lot of stuff. And in fact, here's a fun one. Probably hate the company more than you do. <laughs> like if you say the company sucks, they're not going to, they can't say it because they're being monitored, but they're thinking, yeah, I know. You have no idea how bad they suck. I do. <laughs> it's one of the very, very funny things that happens. Part of the reason I love customer service um, I was definitely burning out, uh, and I realized a significant problem. I no longer cared about customer problems. Uh, I know that sounds bad, uh, or if you're in customer service, you hear that and you're like, yeah, why did you care in the first place? Like, it's a, it's a job. Don't take it personally. I took everything personally. That was the other problem. Like, 
You can't do that if you want to be a um, successful customer service rep. And I just, everything was personal for a long time. And then after a while, people would get mad at me. And my entire reaction would be, you think that's, like, you're what you're describing to you as a catastrophe, to me, it's Tuesday. Like, it's nothing. Um, and, like, almost wanting to snap back at customers and things like that. And it's like, I should go. I'm no longer fit to do this kind of thing. Um, and I don't want to be doing it my whole life. And, you know... I was honestly in a position where it looked like I was not going to be getting out of customer service at that company for a pretty long time. Um, every time I applied for any position that was outside of customer service, uh, I ended up not getting it. Which, you know, is the eternal cry of the millennial. <laughs> We're all just like, oh, come on. Get me out of the entry-level job, please. But yeah, I left to go to grad school to get good at this. And many years later, I still have dreams that I'm back in the call center. <laughs> that doesn't stop <laughs>